Welcome back to the Mount Pleasant Dynasty. Today we are on the road once again to take on the Wake Forest Demon Deacons and what should be a very tough test for this Mount Pleasant team. Wake Forest enters today's game 0-7 on the season before those losses did come against top 25 teams and being in the Power 5 Conference, they are definitely more talented than a team in their first year so this will not be an easy win for us. Wake Forest will open up with the football. They've played three quarterbacks here. All of them have struggled, and this is an offense that averages three turnovers per game, so they've not been playing very well, and we've got to first turnovers if we're going to stay in this game, as it's Carney up the middle. He's gone, and no one's even close. We found a big hole, and he takes it all the way out from 73 yards, and that's a quick lead for Wake Forest, as there was little to no resistance on that kick or on that run I should say. Now on the kickoff it's Ashley Waters making his return as Demarcus May will be out for today's game as Waters goes from the 21 yard line brought down after a 23 yard gain. We open up in a split backfield set give goes to Alden Huff who's coming off two consecutive 100 yard games the, two, the first two of his career. Now a throw outside and somehow I guess it was caught by McCall deflected a couple times Lucky that was not intercepted or incomplete. Now first down and 10, a strike down the middle of the field to Allen Harrison for 23 yards. Fitting that in a tight window is Jonathan Gibbs. Now going back to Harrison, he's got 11 yards on this reception for another first down. Our offense is looking very good on this opening drive. As Gibbs goes down, he's sacked for a loss of 10. So we'll be forced to punt the ball away, pending Wake Forest inside of their own 10-yard line. The wind was blowing in the opposite direction, so we had to punt the ball away there. And Wake Forest will take back over. Going play action for Walford. He's got his man Lewis into the open field. Another big gain for Wake Forest's offense. This one goes for 55 yards. This is one of the least explosive offenses in the country, but right now they're looking like one of the best. As now here's a loss. It's Kavika Watts in the backfield for a loss of six. Third down and 12 for Walford. He throws and waters his beat, misses the tackle, and Tabari Hines goes in from 36 yards out, and it's 14 to nothing. Walford 5 for 5 for 98 yards to start this game. Ashley Waters wearing that knee brace on his left knee. That's what he's coming back from an ACL's tear. So he will take this one out of his own end zone. A big time return here. He's got 49 yards. Now Jonathan Gibbs goes I formation. First down and 10, lobbing into the outside, and nearly intercepted by Austin, deflected away, and that'll bring up third down and long. A three wide set on third down and 10, throw outside, and Watkins can't make the catch. You need to make that play when you're already down by 14. Instead, it's a stop for Wake Forest once again, as Walford looks to air it out. He's got his man Bachman, 40 yards, and that was just awful coverage by Markel Reyes, now it's a run up the middle for Carney, he's got a hole, makes a man miss and takes it from 34 yards out, this was a problem against Mississippi State and Virginia, and now once again against Wake Forest, we are being dominated in the first quarter, 10 plays, 2 or 24, almost 25 yards per play so far, it's Renata McCall on the jet sweep going for 4 yards, trimming up 3rd down and very manageable. We go four wide set, third down and one. Elton Huff goes up the middle. He's got seven yards and a first. That's one of our few first downs so far today. Another man comes in motion. This time it's Alan Harrison on the jet sweep. He goes for 13 yards. One of the better jet sweeps we've had this year. Third down and four. And it's Ricky Barrett. He makes the catch for 11 yards inside of Wake Forest territory. First down and 10. And the pitch. It goes off the defender. And Huff goes all the way back, a loss of 13. That's a big time mistake as Jonathan Gibbs tries to step up, loses the football. He's sacked for a loss of nine. The fumble was overturned though. So third down and 29 and down once again, it's Jonathan Gibbs. That's the second drive killed by negative plays. We opened the game on a good drive that was knocked away because of a couple of negative plays and then that one as well. Still 21 to nothing as there's a first down for Wake Forest. Walford now over the middle. He's got Tabari Hines. He's got the first inside of Mount Pleasant territory. 
So now an eye formation, a tight set, and it's a catch for the tight end. He's into the open field after making the man miss. Still fighting for it inside of the 10 yard line. Another goal to go. First down and goal, it's Carney up the middle. He's into the end zone once more. His third touchdown of this first half. It's 28 to nothing Wake Forest. This game has gotten out of hand completely. Elden Huff gets the counter. He goes for four yards. He's playing pretty well, but it's hard to keep running the ball when you're down by so much, as this time he goes for five yards, and it'll bring up third down and one. McCall comes in motion, keeping it on the triple option. Now pitching it outside, it's Elton Huff. He's into the open field. Here's a big play from Mount Pleasant. Inside of the 10, the defender misses, and Elton Huff gets us on the scoreboard. A 55-yard run on third down and three. A pitch outside for Carney, and the fake fullback dive. Halfback toss works. It's a five-yard gain. I formation, play action, quick throw to his tight end once again. Walford completes it for 15 yards. He has been dominant in this first half. Walford's looked very efficient. Here's another dump down. This one goes to Tabari Hines for six yards. It'll bring up third down and four. Our defense looks to get another stop. Walford throws off his back foot and no one is there. A poor throw he got a little bit of. Happy feet in the pocket. So now the kick is away and the field goal attempt is no good. Had the distance but was wide right. So we will actually head into halftime 28 to 7. A dominant first half for Wake Forest's offense. We need to slow him down. Neither side of the ball really playing very well so far for Mount Pleasant. Our defense has given up big plays all game and our offense really hasn't been able to get anything going consistently. We've got to do a better job of that as we will start off with the ball to open up this second half. Here's Elton Huff up the middle. A good job by the lineman to get off his block. Huff is only able to pick up four yards. A four wide set on second down and six. It's Huff once again. He tries to spin away from a tackler but still picks up 13 yards. Third down and six. Bubble screen to the outside. And Watkins is stopped just short. But we're going to go for it. Fourth down and inches. As it's a toss outside and Huff powers through the tackler for the first down and the drive stays alive. Mays and Huff in the backfield as here's Elton Huff. He gets it. Nice spin move. Makes a nice juke. That was a great play. He doesn't or so far hasn't this season made a lot of people miss. So now first down and 10 and the loss of four. You got to pitch the ball there if you're Jonathan Gibbs. Instead it's third down and six. Gibbs drops back, goes outside, intended for Harrison. It's intercepted by Wake Forest. He had Harrison open, but the safety did a great job of coming over, reading the quarterback's eyes and picking off the football. Now it's Tabari Hines on a corner out for 19 yards. Under center is Walford. Pressure gets there, but the throw outside is to Carney, who loses four yards. It's Devron Blanco, the senior linebacker, with the play. Second down and 14, and there's a loss of 12. Bruce Elbert on the sack. That's his fourth sack on the season, I believe. It's third down and a mile. Throw goes to Hines. He's got 19 of it, but still not enough for the first. It's already third down as there's only 30 seconds left in this third quarter. And once again, it's Yarbury, his fourth sack of the day. Wake Forest offense takes back over. Walford is hit and sacked once again. Really starting to get some pressure in this second half. We've entered the fourth quarter. It's second down and 11. Throw outside to Lewis. He's got it for 24 yards and a big gain. All right, formation, a draw play for Carney. And he hesitates and nowhere to go. He doesn't even get back to the line of scrimmage. Third down and six. Walford from under center throws outside. And Cortez Lewis has it. And now the field goal kicker will come on. 0 for 1 on the day. And now 0 for 2 as that one goes off the upright it appeared. So still 28 points. No points so far in this second half for Wake Forest. We saw our defense do something similar against Virginia where they gave up 35 points in the first half and didn't allow any in the second half. But it's Jonathan Gibbs going down. It's Josh Banks this time on the sack. Third down and 13 trying to set up a screen pass for Elton Huff. He gets outside and is close and just barely picks up our 10th first down on the day. Third down and nine once again, setting up another screen pass. It's Danny Whitmore this time, and he loses the yard on the screen. Great coverage, 
by Wake Forest and their offense will come back on the field. 31 plays, 400 yards. Our offense has had 47 plays under 200 yards. Now it's a pitch outside for Carney and Kavika Watts has his second tackle for loss on the day. Second down and 14. Walford throws outside. He's got Cortez Lewis for an 11 yard gain. I formation as the tight end comes in motion. It's a play action. Walford's going to take off. He's got the first down and more. He runs for 14 yards. Poor containment by the Mount Pleasant defense. Only three minutes left in this game. It's second down and two. Walford keeps it on the read option. He's not the greatest athlete, but showing off some nice mobility on these last couple of runs. Now the stretch play goes to Carney, who's into the open field inside of the red zone and brought down to the 10-yard line by Kavika Watts. A big gain. Colburn checks into the game. He's got it to the outside. He takes it in, and Wake Forest is finally on the board in this second half. So only a minute left in this ballgame. The rest of the time would end up just running out. No more damage done on either side. Cade Carney, 12 carries, 163 yards, and three touchdowns. He was dominant in that first half and really that first quarter. That first run was a great one, just trucking Kavika Watts in that play. And then a couple of other nice runs. But just was never really a close contest. Our offense could not get anything going outside of Elton Huff who put up his third consecutive 100-yard gain. We would start to move the ball well, and then it would either be a penalty, a sack, some sort of negative play that would really negate what we were doing and take us and put us in like third and long or second and long. And that's really hard to come back from with this lack of talent on this team. We only had 205 yards on offense, did control the ball for 20 minutes of the game, and had 11 first downs. So we move forward into week 10. We'll be taking on back at home Texas State. They're a team, another struggling team, one and five on the season. We'll have a couple of prospects visiting in this game as this is a Texas State team led by a talented quarterback and Tyler Jones. Some nice defensive and offensive pieces, but their top wide receiver, TV Williams, will not be playing. So that's a big loss for them. And hopefully we can get a win in this game but you can see a broken fibula for TV Williams, the sophomore receiver from Texas, who will not be playing an updated look at the top 25 poll. Tennessee, UCLA, Oklahoma, Notre Dame, and Ole Miss are your top five. Washington, Oregon, Michigan State, Clemson, and Ohio State are the rest of the top 10. And then a couple of teams, San Diego State, one of the group of five teams in the top 25. The updated Heisman, you have Miles Gaskin, Christian McCaffrey, Chad Kelly, and Mitch Leiner are your top four. But one change we will be making is Kelvin Williams, the freshman right guard, who has given up nine sacks so far this year, will not be playing in this next game. The start will be given to Kerry Rodriguez, another right or another right guard who's a freshman who hasn't really played this year, and we need something different. We're giving up way too much interior pressure. A look now at the season stats. Five passing touchdowns for Jonathan Gibbs with nine interceptions. He's done a better job in recent weeks of taking care of the football. Elton Huff now at 638 yards with seven rushing touchdowns. He's really played well these last three games. He's really impressed me. Also made some nice catches and run after the catch as well. On the defensive side of the ball, Bruce Albert with four sacks leads the team. We've actually forced a number of interceptions, which is good to see. No new commitments this week, but we do have a couple of new players on the board, or actually players who are visiting this week. It's Isaac Henderson, a 5'10 corner. Not the fastest guy, but a good jumper and a pretty good coverage guy. Also a junior college guy from Florida. He would enter as a sophomore, 6'1", 277 pounds. Not the strongest, but could be a just nice depth guy, as we have three of our defensive tackles will be graduating this year. An updated look at the top of our recruiting board as Penn State has actually dropped out for Jerome Hill, the quarterback, as we are now the only real team pursuing him, which is nice to see. He's a good runner, but not that great of a pass. We definitely have developed in that area. But I hope you did enjoy today's episode. If you did, please leave a like down below. Leave your comments on the game down below and our updated recruiting board. But we will try and get our second win and only, I believe, our third or fourth home game of the season. This will be against Texas State and the next couple of days, hopefully. But like I said, I hope you did enjoy. Cause I'm out.